Marquise Green, number 21, among the deep men. Along with C.J. Board. After the hold from Cyrus Jones, the kick will be fielded at the five-yard line. And a very nice return for Marquise Green. So finding a way, don't make mistakes, play smart, see what happens. Something that uh, they will have on their minds as there was a mistake by Alabama Christian Jones. And the Mox may have an early break, and they do. They'll come out with a football as Jones didn't field it cleanly. What the Tide fans were expecting early on. But again, this is an 8-3 ball club. Chattanooga as Robinson keeps it himself and sets up. Man, who is second in the Southern Conference in completion percentage. They try to go with a reverse, and Alabama reads it perfectly. Mosley there. Plenty of time to throw. A flag has come in. Now he'll unload it, and that's going to be picked off. Trey DePriest with the interception. And Alabama. Coach Saban somewhat cautionary with those injuries. Third and nine now for Alabama. As McCarron steps up, throws, has a man, catches made. That's Norwood at midfield in a foot race. They'll bring him down just shy of the 30-yard line and tack on a few more. Personal five, face mask, defense number 20. 15 yards added to the end of the run. First down. Drake bouncing it to the outside. Makes another man miss, and he will score. Touchdown, Alabama. Kenyon Drake, 13-yard touchdown run, and Alabama gets on the board first. Operate from the gun with four wideouts. And Alabama may have jumped off sides there. There was definitely movement. The layup game. Offense number six. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. And trying to read one of the best defenses in the yeah, country. Yeah. There's that as well. He'll tuck it and run. He's got a little room across the 20. Finally forced out of bounds by Ha Ha Clinton Dix. Pollard's had a great year. Averaging better than 40 yards per punt. Had a long of 78. That rugby style trying to kick it away from Jones. Christian this time will not try to field it on a hop. And Derrick Henry now in the backfield. The single setback. He goes in formation, and Jones will make the catch on the throw. He's got a first down and more. That backs up all the defensive guys and opens up nice running lane for Christian Jones after the catch. Swing it out to Amari Cooper, and that's a great play made on the near side by the Mox defensively. Chaz Moore. McCarry. Forced out of the pocket. Tells Norwood block somebody. He does. McCarron gets the first down and then wisely gets out of bounds. Great communication there. So third and long. Bama converted one of these in the last drive. McCarron unloading it to Norwood. And he's going to be brought down shy of that first down marker. As Jones goes in motion. Cooper to his right, Norwood to his left as McCarron has time. Now pressure coming, unloads it, and Fowler's going to be brought down back at the 40. Not only do they fail to pick up the first down, they lose yardage on the play as Robinson once more will operate from the gun. Throws a little shuffle pass underneath, and that's going to be complete for a gain of about six yards. As the clock ticks near the two-and-a-half-minute mark of the opening quarter. To give right up the gut. And they will pick up the first down. More difficult of a win than I think most people would have anticipated. The starters at, uh, among the elite at the FCS level can play with a lot of teams in the country as the flag comes in. Illegal formation, offense, number 72, not on the line of scrimmage, five yard penalty, still second down. The speed of the game is so fast and Mosley. Makes those decisions as quick as anyone. It's a great point. He, he's got the mental awareness as Jonathan Allen greets. Nobody has 
cemented that spot, and here we are in week 11, but by committee, they don't do the job. It's D. Hart fielding this one and dragging attacker across the 20. That time, Bama going with double return men. But uh, six straight years to do that, that's a record. That's the University impressive. of Alabama. Yeah. Speaking of impressive, Kenyon Drake, and he finds space. Talking about his size earlier, he's 6'1", 201. As that one is thrown to DeAndre White, he makes the grab. He may arrive at their destinations a little bit differently, but both find a way to get there. Here's Drake running between the tackles, just as Tyler talked about. He kept the legs churning. He's got the first down and a little bit more. Three wide outs in formation. There's Jones moving into the slot. The bottom of the picture. And again, it'll be Drake. And again, he bounces it to the outside. And again, he finds running room past the first down marker. He's down to the 32. And they'll run that direction. And the big horse wants to run. Derrick Henry, forget about going out of bounds. Mr. Henry falling into that final category as Bama's got first and goal from the five. And Derrick Henry rumbles his way to the end zone for his second Alabama touchdown. Jones waiting on this one. Makes one man miss. Now just trying to read things. Oh, they read it well. Christian Jones to the house. Touchdown, Alabama. 75 yards. Second punt return for a score this year by the junior out of minor high school. Primarily used as a wide receiver throughout the year, but with Jacob Huseman battling a leg injury. They've used Robinson as they bounce it to the near side. That is Hewitt, who is able to get to the edge. It's Green going in motion. They'll swing it out. And first down and more as they go to Derek Crane again. Or perhaps even a hold as we saw the replay again. <laughs> but nonetheless, not able to get him to the turf. They swing it out quickly, another missed tackle, and another first down for Chattanooga. You may remember Alabama was on about their third or fourth string nose guard that day. It took them a half before they started to read things, and they are starting to have some issues now. This is not difficult to review plays. I could do it. 48-yard <laughs> try is blocked. Kicked around. Scramble ensues, and I think Chattanooga's going to come up with it. It doesn't matter. Alabama's going to have possession. From the 42 of Chattanooga, A.J. McCarron. A win today, the winningest starting quarterback in Alabama history. Currently tied with Jay Barker on that list with 50. Fourth down, Bama's going to go for it. Second time they've tried it today on fourth down. They failed on their first attempt. McCarron with time, swings it near side, catch made Amari Cooper first down as he is corralled at the 28-yard line. Senior in at left guard, and he's one of those versatile guys that can play three or four spots on the line as they look deep for Norwood. Catch is made, touchdown Alabama. 29 yards on the scoring play, and Bama leads it down 27 to nothing. The reality is down 28 to nothing. Not very likely. And they also want to get themselves healthy and ready to go yeah. for next week should they get their names called for the playoffs. And, and I guess that's the frustrating part. Is a and Really and truly, it's one of the more amazing things to me is Chattanooga on third down. We'll keep it on the ground with Robinson, and he's going to be close to that first down marker. And the guys that are real football players are fine with that because yeah. they want on the field. Well, and we also don't know to what extent the older guys are saying, trust what they're doing because we started off and we have evolved into this position it's that's where you have to start that being said he gets the old guys to buy into it as well such as 
C.J. Bosman, who we see quite a bit on special teams as well. Head coach Nick Saban in just a moment. We'll talk with our Tom Roberts as we borrow him from the radio side of things and we get the thoughts of the Bama head coach. Will he do so collectively as a group? Will he bring those seniors out one at a time? That's something that will take care of itself later. They want to have a good start to this second half. And look at the big fella rumble right there. Xavier Dixon, very efficient as always, 9 of 12, 110 yards with the one touchdown. Looking, he has Kenny Bell, and the catch is made for a first down. Brian Vogler at tight end. T.J. Yeldon starting running back for the Crimson Tide. Both of those guys kind of battling the ankle injuries. Then you got Dion Blue. Set up that bubble screen for Christian Jones and makes a couple of guys miss and needs to make one more. Almost did. Flags coming in late. After the play was over, Out of bounds. personal foul, unnecessary roughness, 71 on the offense. 15 yards, correct, 17, correction, 17 on the offense. 15 yards from the end of the run. The result of the play was a first down. Boy McCarron, the brother of A.J., started his career at South Alabama. And then made his way. It's a matter of time as you start seeing him inch his way into that defensive backfield before he really breaks one loose. Third in the yard, and Drake gets the first down. And again, we talk about his ability. D. Hart checked out. I'm sorry, Derrick Henry in the game. Play action to him, looking deep for Amari Cooper. He is there. Touchdown, Alabama. 38 yards on the throw and catch in Alabama now with a 34 to nothing lead. And he does try to just kick it away from 22 and that one hits off the back of Kenny Bell and then after it caroms off the hands of DeHart, Bell winds up on top of it. That is a tough deal right there and it's part of what Part of why you go with that rugby style if you're Chattanooga. Basically a brand new offensive unit for the Crimson Tide minus the wideouts. You got Kenny Bell in there who sees a lot of snaps and Derrick Henry has his number called and he'll pick up about six or seven yards. Derrick Henry again barreling his way for a first down and then some. Gets across midfield into Chattanooga territory at the 49. Chris Black in to the slot left side. As they go to Derrick Henry, looking for a block, then looking for people to run over, and is finally going to be brought down right around the 30-yard line. Brandon Green, the tight end to the near side for Alabama. As Charleston Fowler joins Henry in the backfield along with Blake Sims, it's Actually, going to be Chris Black who took the handoff, changes direction, dives, and scores. What a move by Chris Black. They lined him up in the backfield, and I misread the dreadlocks. Those were his and not Derrick Henry's. I was I could not wait to see where, where you were going to go with that. You never know, do you? I, I knew the minute you said. <laughs> I, I knew where you were headed. I just didn't know how you were going to arrive. Here's Hewitt trying to get to the corner again and, and he's a guy that's still learning not the position so much as the system and his responsibilities second and short Chattanooga converts not a great average at 2.8 but that's more than anybody else's average for the mocks today on the ground here's Hewitt trying to win that foot race to the corner and he does picks up about five or six yards and you will take that all day long he could just be behind somebody who's doing it awfully well in doing yeah. things the right way so that they stay in the ball game. Third and short. Robinson able to pick up the first down. Nice to have you in here when we can relax a little bit in the fourth quarter of a ball game. That's, that's a good thing. Absolutely. That's, uh, 
I know everybody worries about fans leaving early, but I don't mind them leaving early if we're 35 ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Would you relay that to the head coach? No, don't tell him I said that. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> the thing that makes me uh, feel good is that I know that Mal is up there with Coach Bryant looking down, and I know he's proud of everything that's going on here. In this class this fall, there's students from every county in the state, every state in the nation, and 71 foreign countries. So Alabama has become a national and international destination. To me, it's been remarkable, and uh, I'm really proud and, and uh, have enjoyed watching them work. Blake Sims on the delay. And that is a very skilled young man. When he came to Alabama, there was a lot of thought that he would wind up on the defensive side of the football. I haven't seen as much from standing out on the practice field, but I watch it every day from my office. That's <laughs> one of the great perks of this job is I've got an office that overlooks the field and Ball start. some more Ball than man. others, Number but uh, it's, it's really start. neat to, uh, I, I, you know, the student athletes in so many different ways, it's, uh, it's very impressive. D. Hart running through a tackler before he's finally pushed out of bounds, and I think that push came after he had gotten to the boundary, so they'll tack on a few more yards and likely will now be a first down. For the most part now, I'll have to admit, I did cheat and watch the LSU game. It was pretty intense, and I didn't do much politicking and working the crowd that day, but... Uh, Coach Hart. Moore used to always tell us some great stories about how he would have a chance here or there to poke his head in during meetings and with the coaches and all. You had a chance to do any of that, and you have to bite your tongue sometimes to prevent that old coach coming out uh, in you. No, no, he was a lot smaller than AJ. Really? Yeah. He wasn't as tall, but I was thinking he was... Condridge yeah. will appreciate me saying that anyway, <laughs> whether he's uh, whether he was or not. Alabama Athletic Director Bill Battle kind enough to join us here in the booth as the Crimson Tide continues its march, leading 42 to nothing. All T10 penny on the carry. A beautiful day with four great coaches, our national championship coaches, not only Sarah Patterson but Mick Potter, J. C. Well, and Patrick. Murphy and I told our got a head coaches meeting last couple weeks ago and I told them one of the building projects that I would love to see is for us to one day expand that Sarah Patterson Champions Plaza. We've got a lot of rooms for national champions and we had another good recruiting class and I'm excited about the direction of our old baseball program. And they're really turned on about this new stadium design. We all are coach and all excited uh, about athletics as a whole. And, and what those guys that Coach Battle and, and uh, them played, they, they all played with, that have kind of kept the ball rolling, so to speak. Ball is loose. That is a free football. Eddie Jackson's got it. And Eddie Jackson is going to head towards the end zone. And Eddie Jackson is going to get tripped up at the five-yard line. So first and goal from... Just outside the five, and D. Hart, the single setback. The handoff from Morris. Hart will make his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Great to see D. Hart get a touchdown run, Tyler. He is a young man who's battled a couple of knee injuries earlier in his career. Doesn't have the same role that a lot of people thought he would have when he came to the capstone, but he has been a major performer in special teams and a guy who you see is still more than capable when he's handed the picks game. And you see everybody running out there to congratulate him as a result of it too. Our game in the late stages, final five minutes and seven seconds is Griffith's kick. Bit of a squibber that Green bobbles, loses the handle completely, ball on the deck, and who's got it? Bama says they do. But they were wrong. It's Chattanooga's football. Our apologies. It's a young man that we don't have on our initial Roger, uh, roster, but great job by our spotters here, Jared Beerbauer. Five-yard penalty, still first down. It's not a matchup that many teams would welcome. Had a very good season. And Terrell Robinson 
as you mentioned, nothing to hang your head about. Third and a yard to give to Crane, and he's going to get the first down, I believe. Yes, he will, near the 30. He may have to enforce the 24-hour rule to make them enjoy this for 24 hours. Yeah. I think the minds have already turned towards the Plains. I hope so. I would be shocked if they haven't. Again, the rugby-style punt from Nick Pollard. And it rolls dead at the 13-yard line. So Alabama will have it first and 10 from there. Final 31 seconds of the ball game. But I almost think that plays to our advantage, Chris, because I think the guys are going to be focused, ready to play this game, aren't going to be nervous because they've been in these type of environments and situations before. I think it will bring out the best in us also. Final snap of the ball game. Alabama. Now 11 and 0, 49 to nothing. Your final score: the Crimson Tide, a win. Chattanooga, earning even more respect from head coach Nick Saban and his Alabama players, as the Mox played very solid and capped a great regular season. But for Alabama, one more game to go before their regular season comes to a close. We come back to wrap things up after this here on Crimson Tide Pay-Per-View.